Good evening. Good evening. We begin our worship this evening, our Easter Vigil, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On this most holy day, on which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, we are gathered here in vigil and prayer. This is the Passover of the Lord, in which, in hearing his word, we share in his victory over death. O oh God, you are like a refiner's fire, and your spirit kindles the hearts of your faithful people with the fire of your love. Bless, we ask you, this new flame, and those who keep this joyous Easter vigil. Burning with desire for life with you, may we be found rightly prepared to share in the feast of light which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, is our time and eternity, is of the glory and dominion now and forever. By his wounds we are healed now and forever. Jesus promised his friends, because I live, you will live. May the light of Christ, who is risen from glory, from the dead, scatter all the darkness of our hearts and minds. We pray. Almighty and most merciful Father, once we were dark, but now we are light in Jesus Christ our Lord. Bless abundantly all who joyfully celebrate this day in faith, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Fill them with your heavenly blessing in him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And during the singing of our next hymn, Like the Golden Sun Ascending, I invite all of you, following the instruction of your usher, to come forward, one family at a time, uh, to light a candle, uh, with the Christ candle in remembrance and celebration that our light is forever eternally connected to his.
Rejoice now all creation. Sound forth the trumpet of salvation and proclaim the triumph of our King. Rejoice to all the earth in the radiance of the light now poured upon you and made brilliant by the brightness of the everlasting King. Know that the ancient darkness has been forever banished. And rejoice, O Church of Christ, clothed in the brightness of the sun, that all this house of God ring out with rejoicing with the praises of all God's faithful people. Please rise. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places, with all our hearts and minds and voices, praise you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, and your one and only Son, Jesus Christ. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who offered himself for the sin of the world, who has cleansed us by the shedding of his precious blood. This is the eve when you brought our fathers, the children of Israel, out of bondage in Egypt, and led them through the Red Sea on dry ground. This is the eve when all who believe in Christ are delivered from bondage to sin and are restored to life and immortality. This is the eve of Christ's resurrection from the dead. The seal of the grave is broken and the morning of the new creation breaks forth out of the night. Oh, how wonderful and beyond all telling is your mercy toward us, O oh God, that to redeem a slave you gave your son. How holy is this night when all wickedness is put to flight and sin is washed away. How holy is this night when innocence is restored to the fallen and joy is given to those downcast. How blessed is this night when man is reconciled to God in Christ. Holy Father, accept now the evening sacrifices of our thanksgiving and praise. Let Christ, the true light and morning star, shine in our hearts. He who gives light to all creation lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one of God, now and forever. On this most holy night, our Savior Christ, the Lord, spoke, broke the power of death. By his resurrection brought life and salvation to all creation. Let us praise the Lord, for he truly keeps his word. The sun of righteousness has dawned on those sitting in darkness and in the shadow of death. And in our lessons this evening, we celebrate all creation, all mankind and the created world itself, celebrating its promised release from the bondage to decay. In between our readings, we will join in singing one verse at a time of Christ, the life of all the living. And in our first lesson, taken from Genesis chapter 1, we celebrate with creation, God's created world itself. Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was undeveloped and empty. Darkness covered the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good. He separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. There was evening and there was morning the first day. God said, let there be an expanse between the waters, and let it separate the water from water. God made the expanse, and he separated the water that was below the expanse from the water that was above the expanse, and it was so. God called the expanse sky. There was evening and there was morning the second day. God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together to one place, and let the dry, dry land appear, and it was so. The waters under the sky gathered to their own places, the dry land appeared, God called the dry ground land, and the gathering places of the waters he called seas. God saw that it was good. God said, let the earth produce plants, vegetation that produces seed, and trees that bear fruit with seed in it, each according to its own kind on the earth, and it was so. The earth brought forth plants, vegetation that produces seed according to its own kind, and trees that bear fruit with seed in it, each according to its own kind. And God saw that it was good. There was evening and there was morning the third day. God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to divide the day from the night and let them serve as markers to indicate seasons, days, and years. Let them serve as lights in the expanse of the sky to give light to the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. 
also made the stars. God set these lights in place in the expanse of the sky to provide light for the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. God saw that it was good. There was evening and there was morning the fourth day. God said, let the waters swarm with living creatures, and let birds and other winged creatures fly above the earth in the open expanse of the sky. God created the large sea creatures and every living creature that moves with which the waters swarm according to their own kind. And every winged bird according to its kind. God saw that it was good. God blessed them. And he said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the waters of the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. There was evening and there was morning the fifth day. God said, let the earth produce living creatures according to their own kind. Livestock creeping things and wild animals according to their kind, and it was so. God made the wild animals according to their own kind, the livestock according to their own kind, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its own kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the livestock, and over all the earth over every creeping thing that crawls on the earth. God created the man in his own image. In the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. God said, look, I've given you every plant that produces seed on the face of the whole earth, and every tree that bears fruit with seed, it will be yours for food. To every animal of the earth and to every bird of the sky and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. There was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. The heavens and the earth were finished, along with everything in them. On the seventh day, God had finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had been doing. God blessed the seventh day and set it apart as holy, because on it he rested from all his work of creation that he had done. This is God's word. We pray. Almighty God, you most wonderfully created human nature, and yet more wonderfully redeemed it. By your mercy, renew us in the image of him who came to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Thing that I have made, I will walk quite off the face of the earth. 
Noah did everything that the Lord commanded him. In the 600th year of Noah's life, the second month, on the 17th day of the month, on that very day, all the fountains of the great deep burst open, and the floodgates of the sky were open. The rain came down on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. On that same day, Noah, Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons, along with them, entered the ark. They went in with every animal according to its kind. All, all the livestock according to their kinds, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth according to its kind, and everything that flies according to its kind, flying birds of every sort. Heirs of all the animals that have the breath of life in them went to Noah in the ark. A male and a female of each animal that breathes went in, just as God had commanded Noah. Then the Lord shut Noah in. The flood kept coming on the earth for forty days. The waters became deeper and lifted up the ark until it floated high above the earth. The water kept increasing and overwhelmed the earth, and the ark was carried along on the surface of the water. Then at the end of the forty days, Noah opened the window he had made in the ark. He sent out a raven, and it kept flying back and forth until the waters were dried up from the earth. And he sent out a dove to see if the waters had receded from the surface of the ground. But the dove found no place to rest its foot, and it returned to him in the ark, because there was water on the surface of the whole earth. Noah reached out his hand, took the dove, and brought it back into the ark. He waited another seven days. Then he sent the dove out of the ark again. The dove came back to him at evening, and there, in his mouth, was an olive leaf it had just plucked. So no one knew that the waters had receded from the earth. He waited another seven days and sent the dove out again. This time, it did not return to him anymore. And so in the 600th year, in, in the 600th first year, in the first month, on the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the earth. Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked out. He saw that the surface of the ground was dry. In the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was dry. God spoke to Noah. He said, go out of the ark, you, your wife, your sons, and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing of every sort that is with you, all flesh, including birds, livestock, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may swarm over the earth and be fruitful multiply on the earth. Noah went out with his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives along with him. God said to Noah and to his sons who were with him, Listen, I will now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you, and with everything with, with, with you that has the breath of life, the birds and the livestock, and with every wild animal that is on the earth with you. With everything that went out of the ark, even with every wild animal on the earth, I will establish my covenant with you. Never again will all living creatures be cut off by the waters of a flood. Neither will there ever be a flood to destroy the earth. God also said, this is the sign of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you that I am giving for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the cloud, and it will be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. This is God's word. Let us pray. O Lord, whose wrath burned against the evil of humanity, you kill and bring to life again according to your own purpose. You brought the flood on a wicked and perverse generation, and yet saved faithful Noah and his family. Gather your elect into your church, and so complete your work of mercy, that the ends of the earth may know your salvation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 to 18, where we celebrate along with Abraham the promise of life. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He called to him, Abraham. And Abraham answered, I am here. God said, now take your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah. Offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains there, the one to which I will direct you. Abraham got up early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him along with Isaac, his son. Abraham split the wood for the burnt offering. Then he set out to go to the place that God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and loaded it on Isaac, his son. He took the fire pot and the knife in his hand, the two of them went on together. Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father, he said, I am here, son. He said, Here are the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So the two of them went on together. They came to the place that God had told him about. Abraham built the altar there. He arranged the wood, tied up Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. And the angel of the Lord called him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Abraham said, I am here. He said, do not lay a hand on the boy. Do not do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld your son, your only son, from Abraham looked around and saw that behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. So it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, I have sworn by myself, declares the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. I will bless you greatly, and I will multiply your descendants greatly, like the stars of the sky and like the sand of the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the city gates of their enemies. In your seed, all the nations of the earth will be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. This is God's word. Let us pray. O oh God, you promised to faithful Abraham that he would be the father of many nations. And through the sacrament of holy baptism, you increase your chosen people throughout the world. Give to your church a living trust in all your promises. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Which he will perform for you today. For the Egyptians you see today, 
you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You must wait quietly. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to set out. As for you, lift up your staff, stretch out your hand over the sea, and divide the sea so that the Israelites can go through the middle of the sea on dry ground. I myself will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go into the sea after them. And I will gain glory through Pharaoh and his entire army, through his chariots and his charioteers. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord, when I have gained glory through Pharaoh, his chariots, and his charioteers. Then the angel of God, who was going in front of the Israelite forces, moved and went behind them. The pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and stood behind them. It went between the Egyptian forces and the Israelite forces. The cloud was dark on one side, but it lit up the night on the other. Neither group approached the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all night long the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned the sea into dry land. The waters were divided. The Israelites went into the middle of the sea on dry ground. The waters were like a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them, and all of Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his charioteers went after them into the middle of the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the on the Egyptian forces from the pillar of fire and cloud. Then he confused the Egyptian forces. He jammed their chariot wheels, and they had difficulty driving them. The Egyptians said, We must flee from Israel, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, and the waters will come back over the Egyptians, over their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak the sea returned to its normal place. While the Egyptians were fleeing from it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the middle of the sea. The waters came back and covered the chariots and the charioteers, the entire army of Pharaoh that went into the sea after the Israelites. Not even one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the middle of the sea on dry land, and the waters were like a wall for them on their right and on their left. On that day, the Lord saved Israel from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the mighty hand with which the Lord put into action against the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in Moses his servant. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. They said, I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. This is God's word. Let us pray. O God, you once delivered your people Israel from slavery under Pharaoh and led them safely through the Red Sea. By this you gave us a picture of baptism. Lead us always to rejoice in your baptismal promise that we may live in its grace and declare to all people your desire make them children of Abraham, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Continue to live. Yes, I will make an everlasting covenant with you. 
faithful mercies promised to David. Look, I appointed him as a witness for peoples, a leader and commander of peoples. Look, you will call out to a nation you do not know, and a nation that does not know you will run to you on account of the Lord your God, because of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked man abandon his way, let an evil man abandon his thought. Let him turn to the Lord, and he will be, and he will show mercy on him. Let him turn to our God, because he will abundantly pardon. Certainly my plans are not your plans. And your ways are not my ways, declares the Lord. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways. And my plans are higher than your plans. Just as the rain and snow come down from the sky, and you never turn there unless they first water the earth. They can give birth and cause it to sprout, so that it gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. In the same way, my word that goes out from my mouth will not return to me empty. Rather, it will accomplish whatever I please, and it will succeed in the purpose for which I sent it. This is God's word. Let us pray. Almighty God, you created and sustained all things by the power of your word. You send forth your spirit to renew your creation. Give your saving water of life to all who thirst, that they may bear much fruit in your glorious kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Have mercy on me, 
Have mercy on me, you friends of mine, because the hand of, the, of God has struck me. Why do you pursue me the way God does? Will you never get enough of my flesh? Oh, how I wish that my words were written down. Oh, how I wish that they were inscribed in bronze, that they would be engraved in rock forever with an iron tool and letters filled with lead. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives and that at the end of time, he will stand over the dust. Then, even after my skin has been destroyed, nevertheless, in my own flesh, I will see God. I myself will see him. My own eyes will see him, and not as a stranger. How my heart yearns within me. This is God's word. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the Passover of your Son, you brought us out of sin into righteousness, and out of death to life. Give your servants patience and endurance, that looking in faith to your Son, we may see beyond the trials of this life to the joys of the life to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. 
Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and who can speak of his descendants? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong. Because he poured out his life unto death, and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. <clears throat> this is God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. <clears throat> 